You know, bottom line is that the more that you heal yourself, the more you become in tune with the natural rhythms of nature. And you learn to use really important portals like the solstice, the equinoxes, the eclipses, all to help you transform and to heal. Today, as the sun ascends to its highest peak and bathes the entire world in its golden glow, we honor the summer solstice. This is a sacred day, ladies, celebrated by our ancestors across the world, across cultures, across cult continents for a very big reason. These ancient civilizations recognized the profound significance of this especially celestial event, and they developed unique rituals to welcome the summer and to harness this very transformative energy of the sun. For a kundalini yoga, which is someone who meditates like you and I, the summer solstice is a celebration of victory and a huge, huge opportunity to disrupt ancestral karmic patterns at the level of the DNA so that we can actually align with our destiny. So today we're going to be exploring these rituals practiced by tribes, by cultures throughout the world. We're going to dwell deep into the symbolism, into understanding these deep-rooted connection between humans and nature during the sacred time. And we're going to look at what inner work you need to be doing to disrupt the spatterns of ancestral karma, especially on a day like today. Satnam, beautiful goddesses, welcome, welcome, welcome. Such an honor to be here with you on this very mystical, auspicious, and transformative day. We have such a huge opportunity upon us for transformation, for healing that I do not want you to sleep on it. So what I want to do today is focus a little bit on understanding the power of the summer solstice, look at how our ancestors celebrated this very sacred time in uh, our lives, as well as what you need to be doing, exactly what it is that you need to be doing to actually use this energy for transformation and for healing. Because like I mentioned at the beginning, if you are a meditator, if you're a kundalini yogi, if you're a yogi, that's really what a yogi means. It's someone who meditates. Then you understand that the summer solstice is an incredible portal where you can clear out so much karma and you can uh, create lasting change. Now, one of the things that's very important about the solstice that many of our ancestors really understood was, of course, this connection with nature, right? Being part of uh, uh, these rhythmic patterns, they had their sacred calendar just the way we do too. And we just don't see it as sacred. You know, we, we're people, especially in modern society that, are driven by goals and execution, which is not a bad gig, but a lot of the times we're on autopilot, you know, like that movie Click, where Adam Sandler just wakes up one day and he's divorced and his kids don't talk to him and his whole life has pretty much transpired in front of his eyes. That is what I call being unconscious and not really living. And when you are living in that manner, you don't pay attention to these natural cycles. You don't care. You, you don't care about how Mother Earth changes and how those Earth changes affect us. And if you think about what is happening in the world, I mean, that is really why Mother Earth is also responding to us in such an angry, transformative way. She's calling us back, her children. And, and that's when one thing that the ancestors, upon, upon many others, things that they did right you know they were connected to mother earth they honored her they used these cycles specifically for rituals like meditation like dance why because they knew that they could expand their consciousness they could evolve their spiritual enlightenment the connection with nature in essence they knew and believed that by aligning themselves with the rhythms of the natural world they could access higher states of consciousness and spiritual enlightenment which is for all of us and i think us in modern society not only do we not believe in it not only do we think it's not for us but we also disregard it as, as something that is our birthright and not being connected to nature and these rhythmic cycles is what prohibits us from doing that. The other thing about the summer solstice, especially, that's very important is the symbolism around the rebirth that we're all going through. Because the summer solstice is representative of a time 
of renewal and rebirth because it marks the transition from the waning and the waxing of the sun's power, signifying what? The continuation of life, of growth, and of abundance. Jogi Bhajan, the great tantric master who brought Kundalini Yoga from the East to the West, spoke about the summer solstice. And he said that this would be the day where the sun would be at its highest ecstasy and the power of our prana, which is our breath, would be the, at the highest, most impactful state it could it is in the entire year. Which means if you're practicing Kundalini Yoga meditations, like we did this morning in Sadhana and we're going to be doing for the next three days, Every inhale, every exhale is a thousand times more powerful for you to go into the subconscious mind and to change these patterns and to go to the level of the DNA and to introduce a brand new program, a program of unity, of program of love, of program of acceptance and forgiveness. So this is a time of major growth, of spiritual evolution, of rebirth, and also of harvest. You know, we just came out of the winter season where a lot of seeds were planted. We had to go into the dark and there's nothing bad about the dark because that's where we learn a lot about ourselves. But now here comes the light. What are you going to do with the light, right? What are you harvesting? What is being exposed to you as these truths? And can you be sovereign enough and courageous enough to learn to work with those truths and that illumination and not numb it, not run away from it, and not let it continue to become a program and a pattern in your life? Because that's ultimately what happens. And this is why our ancestors throughout the world always celebrated these times. It was a cosmic alignment for them. For the Mayans, which I've studied a lot, and I've actually visited uh, their their sites in Mexico, like Palenque or Chichen Itza. I mean, in Chichen Itza, they literally built these temples, this uh, temple to the god of the sun or the god, the serpent's god, Kukalkan. And in Chichen Itza, if you've ever been there, if you go to Cancun, it's easy to get to Chichen Itza. There's a lot of tours that take you there because it's actually in the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula. So it's not even far from there. And you can do like a day trip and go check it out. But like on days like today, I mean, it's super packed. You can't even get in. So I don't know if I would recommend you try to get in on the actual summer solstice day or the actual equinox days. But today, very magical. You know, the way they created those temples, sacred geometry, they would practice dance, meditation inside of these temples. And on the summer solstice today, you can see a serpent being shown on the angle of one of the sides of the temples. Why? Because of the way the position of the sun and the position of how they built these actual temples. So what did they do? They used structures like this to harness the energy, to collect the energy. Because what we know in Kundalini Yoga is that on days like today or like eclipses or big portals like the equinoxes, the energy that is being given to us on Mother Earth project it from the sun, which impacts you and me, because we're like plants, basically, is very different than any other day. In fact, it is what is known as Z energy. Z energy is created in a special form that actually helps us break through blockages very, very quickly. Tantric necklaces, like the ones that I wear, are created in Z energy to empower and strengthen and fortify your meditation practice well imagine that on the day like today where there's equal amount of light equal amount of sun this energy projected onto the earth if you're able to harness it with these structures with meditation with ritual with dance you are going to elevate your consciousness to a very different level than if you did it on any other day and there could there is a quick instantaneous miraculous healings transformations downloads connection to the divine connection to your guides that can happen and that's why especially on days like today there would be many dancing much dancing much uh rituals using copal which i like to burn as incense or sage i mean it was a whole day celebration and it wasn't just that day i mean it was days before and after in kundalini yoga we celebrate especially the seven days after with eating amazing high frequency foods, doing amazing fun things that we like to do, like laugh and enjoy ourselves. Why? Because this is a celebration of the power of the sun. The power of the sun ultimately also represents our ego and our identity. So we have to look at what is being illuminated by the sun 
as those programs that actually don't serve us in who we truly are. So there are sacred sites that were created by the Mayans, the Aztecs, and throughout the world. I mean, if you think about the Celts and Stonehenge, that's probably one of the most popular ones that many human beings know about. And one day I'll eventually visit myself. But the in, in the British islands, the Celtics celebrated the summer solstice a lot. I mean, this was one of their biggest celebrations next to the equinox, right? And they gather in Stonehenge even today. Today, I can only imagine how Stonehenge was this morning as the summer solstice came in. Act, I can just imagine people visiting these sacred sites. Why? Because there was gratitude for the sun. There was light, you know, this life-giving energy that the thanked and that they they build their harvest around and that they honored it was they were very present and conscious it wasn't just another typical day and they held rituals that included offerings a lot of times of food of flowers of all these different things right and the Celts believed that the alignment especially of the sun on this day today allowed them to access this cosmic energies to receive blessings blessings for prosperity, blessings for for fertility, and blessings for protection. The Native Americans, the tribes like like the Lakota, the Lakota Sioux tribe, Sioux tribe, and I'm probably not saying that right, so please forgive me. They resided in North America, right? And they still do. And they celebrated the summer summer solstice through sun dance, through ceremony. There's intense rituals that involved fasting and purification. That's one thing that I always start to do, like purifying myself, fasting a few days before, a few days throughout the summer solstice. I have not been as dedicated. Usually I start like three days before and I have not uh, focused on that this year, but the next three to five days for me are gonna be a lot of cleansing, a lot of purging, a lot of eating very high vibration foods to actually help me connect more to this energy. But for them, this was a very symbolic time of connection between the sun and us living beings. I mean, I can go on and on. The Inca Empire in South America, I visited Peru. That's where I did my plant medicine work with Mother Ayahuasca. But in Peru, the Inca Empire, they celebrated the uh, summer solstice and the festival of the sun. It happens every single year. And in the summer solstice for them, they did ceremony, and especially in Cusco, Peru, which is a beautiful, very high in the mountains town. This is where I experienced the plant medicine San Pedro with very beautiful shamans and beautiful temples at the top of mountains that absolutely had a divine impact in my life. But like today, there's beautiful ceremonies, sun ceremonies, where they're embracing the 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 sun's energy and the ray and they're doing these beautiful offerings to honor this life-giving energy that is here for us today and i could go on and on with all the other traditions scandinavian all over in, in india i mean it happens all over the world and this is why we have to honor and remember that our ancestors were not savages they were actually much more advanced than us as it relates to technology and more importantly, spiritual power. And this is why today it was such an important time for them to connect and to use these energies to meditate, to actually change their patterns and to move into a higher elevated version of who they truly were. For us in Kundalini Yoga, this is a very important time and space, like I said. Because our prana is so powerful, our meditation practices today become even more impactful. This was a day that Jogi Bhajan would say that you could go in, rewrite your destiny, and change the pattern so that you could align with your satnam, which is your truth and your entire wholeness of who you truly are. So there are specific meditations, there are specific kriyas, which are specific recipes that we put together through sound, what we chant, through breathing, how we breathe, and even how we position our hands that are practiced specifically on the summer solstice to help you go deep into the subconscious mind, to help you go deep into the DNA so that you're harnessing this energy, which is the Z pattern, to actually make these lasting changes. And that's why with Kundalini Yoga and many traditions have been found because Kundalini Yoga is 5,000 years old. 
It came before religion. So I've traveled throughout the world. And what I've noticed is that many traditions throughout the world, it wasn't just in India, the Mayans, the Aztecs, they practice tantric yoga, which is Kundalini yoga. It's the science of energy. They were found in murals in their temples with the same mudric positions, doing the same type of sitting positions as Kundalini yoga. Why? Because it's the science of energy. So if you work with the science of energy on a high energy day, you can co-create, you can manifest, you can um, block, and you can release yourself from even what we call karmic curses especially as it relates to our ancestors, because on days like today, they are very, very active. I had a very beautiful meditation with my ancestors this morning, where they all gathered around me, lifting me up to a higher mountain, giving me the energy that I need, especially because of these next three days, where we're all coming together in community to invite and welcome this energy to help us in our transformation purposes and in our healing purposes. In fact, for the last three years, I've held a summer solstice community event for my community, but I've always made it private. I've always only hosted it for those women that are already part of my group coaching program and part of my healing community. But this year, there has been so much happening in the world and in the lives of so many of the women that I work with that I decided that I would actually open up the entire event to the public. So if you are a woman, if you are a sovereign woman, that is a cycle breaker that is here to heal herself. So seven generations before her and seven generations after her are healed. Then I invite you to join us for the next three days for my three day summer solstice journey to rewire your brain and heal your nervous system to disrupt ancestral karmic patterns of emotional pain. This is going to be happening virtually on Zoom. So you can be anywhere in the world it starts at 6 p.m. at Mountain Standard Time. We start tonight, and we're, I'm going to take you through my three-part process of disrupting these ancestral karmic patterns. We're going to work through tonight, first, awareness. What is ancestral healing? Who is it for? What patterns are you running under that are continuing to create toxicity in your life, like depression, anxiety, addictions, repeating divorce, toxic relationships, and prosperity blockages. So tonight is going to be very emotional. We're going to feel what we feel. We're going to gain the awareness. And then we're going to move through the next day. So the second day, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time as well, we're going to work through my second part of my process, which is vitality. We're going to work with specific practices to increase your energy to raise your vitality so that you can learn to go beyond the pattern. And then on the third day, I'm going to take you through my integration process, which is very important. You're going to learn more about the tools that are going to help you disrupt these patterns. Not only that, but you're going to develop a 40-day plan to actually get to the results that you're here to get. So this is a three-day journey you're taking with me. It is live. If for some reason you can't join us live on any one of those days, there will be a 24-hour replay where you can catch the work that we did. Now, you all know if you've worked with me before or if you know me that I am a no-fluff type of coach, mentor, or teacher. So get ready for a very high-level event that you think you would think that you paid for because it is complimentary. And number two, get ready to do the work because it is going to require you to show up to do the work to get the results. So you can now go to www.veronicabarraganiam.com forward slash summer solstice, and you can sign up for the event. If you sign up, you're going to get information on how to access call-in information. You're also going to get my workbook because it's not just that I'm going to give you the coaching, the mentoring, and the healing journey for the three days. You're actually going to take with you a 22-page workbook with all my tools, all my guidelines, my sheet sheets to help you throughout the three days and post the three days so that, again, you get the results that you're here to get. And there couldn't be a more wonderful, perfect time to actually do this than tonight and during these three days of the summer solstice, because this is where our nervous systems, ladies, and our brains are more susceptible to be able to take in this medicine 
and so that we can work through these deep patterns right at the level of the DNA. So go to the link in my website. This will be your last chance to join us, to register for the event. I'm closing the registration after tonight because if you come in like on Wednesday or on Friday, you're going to miss my, uh, today's and you're going to be behind. So even if you miss tonight because you can't make it, you'll have tomorrow to catch up with that. But if you join us until tomorrow or the next day, it'll be too late. So tonight at midnight, register for the event and you'll be able to join us and you'll be able to get the workbook and you'll be able to also get, of course, the replace it for some reason you can't be there live during that time. Dominica says, I'm joining a yoga summer solstice celebration tonight. That's amazing. That is the best thing you can do for yourself. Satsang, a community, being together with other women, or even in a community aspect, that energy quantifies. It even grows bigger if you're with other human beings. So that is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Join a community event tonight where you're meditating, where you're practicing yoga, or join us tonight if you have not already registered or added one in your life. Again, www.summer, or not summer solstice, Veronica Barragan, I am, dot com forward slash summer solstice. And yes, it is open to all women. So you can invite the women in your life, sisters, friends, things of uh, anybody in your community that you want or is ready to do this type of work. The other question that I got is, do you have to have experience with meditation or have ever practiced yoga? Absolutely not. You could be a beginner. As long as you know how to breathe, you can practice Kundalini yoga and meditation. Uh, the other thing, come prepared tonight. I would say you're going to have your workbook. Still bring your journal so that you can jot down anything that is downloaded to you very quickly. Come together with the maybe uh, incense. Like I said, I love to use copal. C-O-P-A-L, beautiful energy uh, that helps clear and helps uh, purify your environment because we are going to be working with memories and a lot of uh, uh, things that are rooted in the subconscious and in the DNA. So we just want to have a clear environment to do that. So Kupal works really well. Sage, if you have sage, bring that with you too. Uh, you can wear whatever you want. But do wear something that makes you feel radiant, beautiful, and comfortable. Remember, it's a celebration of the light within you. Also, you do not need to necessarily cover your head or do anything extra. Just show up with however you feel fabulous and radiant. And the last thing is just stay super hydrated. So like bring a ton of water with you. Drink a lot of water with you today because we want to make sure that you don't actually uh, cause more anxiety. When we are dehydrated, we actually can put more pressure on the glandular system, which creates more anxiety. So we want to uh, lessen that so that we can be more open to all of the downloads and all the things that will transpire throughout the next three days. Other than that, as long as you can breathe, you're all set. So I will see you tonight, 6 p.m. Mountain Center Time. Last time to register, www.veronicabarraganiam.com forward slash summer solstice excited to see you all tonight wishing you all a day of victory of celebration may the light within you be born at an even brighter level and may you project it out throughout the world so that others can feel comfortable to be authentically themselves i'll see you all tonight seven